I can answer that Uzbekistan is a relatively southern country, practically a little north of the, more north than northern than Japan, but skies are very bright. Uh, in the darkness, you see beautiful and huge amount of stars. And this is beautiful. And when you are, ch you are a child, it influences you enormously. Uh, there are clouds are very rare. And in the summer, when it's every day is very dry. In the night, we, were, uh, we had a small yard near our house. And um, children were sleeping in the yard. And the just sky was above us. And people who had better eyes, they were able to see binary stars, you understand, which are well known historically, visible binaries. And uh, it was very interesting because it was also very strange when you see that this image is in reality double image and your friends do not see this. My mother gave me very good eyes when I was born. I am uh, using glasses only maybe for five or six years, but I always had good eyes and it was pleasure that you can look and see a little more than your friends. And now I understand that when we have huge telescopes, how great it is to have very good detectors and to see deeper than other people can. And all my young years, when I was student, when I was graduate student, when I was young scientist, I was working every day of the week, and I was working maybe 14 hours per day at least, every, every day, because I wanted to understand more, and this was absolutely great when you are writing, writing formally, and then you see that something interesting come. And when there is something interesting, you cannot stop, you wish to get more and more, you understand me? And this is great pleasure to walk in the environment when around are very strong people. Then you also are trying to be strong. I can tell you that scientists who are working and who know their subject very deeply, I think that they should explain to other people their understanding of danger, of even of some technological developments for the future of the humans on the earth. I can tell you my opinion from the point of view of astronomy. We are observing our galaxy, and only in our galaxy we have hundreds of mi billions of stars. Many of these stars are very similar to our sun. We know that majority of these stars should have planets around. And now people are very lucky. They are discovering hundreds of exoplanets. Exoplanets, these are planets which are on the orbit around nearby stars. And we see now hundreds of them. This is discoveries of the last five years. And I'm sure we will discover more and more planets, and we will find planets which are very similar to our Earth, where all conditions are similar. And then question arises. If there are also, if there, there is a life, and this life is advanced as our life, would we see it? And answer is yes. Because, for example, we on the Earth, 
are now in many, brand, in many spectral bands. For example, where telephones are active or where television stations are working, Earth is much brighter than our sun. And it is possible to detect our Earth, if somebody specially looks to it, from rather distant, uh, from rather, di from, uh, rather big distance. Till now, we do not see no one other civilization, which is bright. And please understand, 200 years ago, people just started to understand what is the electricity. Today, electricity is <laughs> everywhere. Today, we have this whole radio transmitter, television transmitter. Everything was absent, you understand me? 200 years, not even 200 years, 50 years ago, there was practically no television. This was the start of television era. Now, television is everywhere. And this 50 years, do you know, <laughs> it's good to remind people that our Earth exists at least four and a half billion years. Why last 50, 200, 2,000 years, 5,000 years are so important? Why it was not before? And many people, very clever people, think that civilization, any civilization, has the end. That we can become so strong, we can change environment so strongly that then it would be impossible for us ourselves to survive. We are killing ourselves, our life. Most of us is, for example, atomic war. If there will be very big atomic war, we don't know will, uh, population on the globe survive or not. And we see this, how dangerous is the situation, how rapid is progress, and how short is the time scale of this progress in, co in comparison with the whole life, for, for the whole life time of the Earth. And now when we know about existence Already we observed thousands of planets. We do not see anything there. And there are certainly many billions of planets in our galaxy, and we do not see yet life there. This brings a lot of questions. And this makes us scientists very responsible. We should explain that there is something, and we should always think that it's important not to damage in our environment because we are so lucky with our environment and it's important that it will survive for our grandchildren, grand-grandchildren and for all future generations. I think that it's very simple. First is to learn because now we know so much that it's a lot what we can learn just reading best books, hearing lectures of strong and experienced and very creative people to see how also how they think. But then it is, uh, there is only one answer, work, work and work. If you are working hard and if you have good education, if you have good ideas, then you will get success. But you know, all this together, it's not very easy that everything will come in one place. You understand me? Therefore, I think that some people are especially lucky. They are coming or coming to science exactly in the right time and they coming to the right place, to, ra to the right laboratory where, you know, everything is booming. And then these young people would be very happy because they have chance to do great things.